Okay, by popular demand, tall man training tips. Um, this, of course, um, that y the trainer you see now is Philip, um, who was one tough son of a gun. And uh, recently he's been uh, my training partner and I his, and um, I've made some incredible gains training with him. So the first tall man tip is um, if you're over six foot two and I'm six foot four, and I know uh, some of my friends out there on YouTube are six foot six and you guys you guys have got it the hardest um do not i repeat do not seek a training partner who is tall <laughs> do not seek a training partner who is the same height as you um or a similar height or even taller um find one of those short powerhouses uh like philip here and um <clears throat> that's the guy you need to train with so that's my first tall man tip uh tall man training tip find yourself a short powerhouse training partner because god is my witness they're the only uh people who will be able to train with you uh the majority of tall uh people are just not good trainers um they're not good bodybuilders and, and that's a fact um the majority of tall uh men uh in bodybuilding just don't seem to be able to put mass on their frame and i don't know what it is um but i'm glad i'm not one of them and um so i'm going to come now to the second training tip and it's why i've put this footage here the tall man training tip and it is if you watch the way philip does his preacher bench dumbbell curls and the way i do them there's a distinct difference um and uh hopefully you should see it now um if not, I'll tell you anyway. Uh, nope, more narcissistic footage of myself. Um, what you need to realize is when you are tall, you cannot get away with um, partial reps. Um, you have to always use a full range of motion in almost all your movements and um, full extension. So I'd like you to compare the way I do a preacher bench dumbbell curl um, to the way Philip does them and uh, he does kind of almost partial um, reps and you'll you'll see it here um, when he does a preacher bench um, barbell curl which we're doing here for our biceps um, and now watch the way he does this that's 65 kilos no 68 kilos he's doing there you see the way he does it um, he's not cheating um, that's the way his shorter arms uh, benefit from um, curling and you can see that by the biceps peak he has, which is no joke. It's one of his strongest attributes. And um, But as a, sh as a tall guy, if you try and do them, for instance, the way Philip's doing them, you're just not going to get the results. And you'll probably end up like all the other tall guys um, over 6'4", six 6'6", foot six foot six, even 6'2", six who just can't get the development, um, especially biceps peak. Uh, do you know how rare biceps peak is on, on a guy over 6'2", uh, coming up 6'4", especially? Now, what's the way I do them? absolute full range of motion um as much as i possibly can without snapping my elbow off um that's what you need to do it doesn't matter if it feels like your head's going to explode which i assure you when i was doing this my head felt uh like it was going to explode so that's what you need to do um so the second tall man training tip is a full range of motion and full extension all the time scream through the weight whatever um that's what you need to do and you need to do it when you bench, when you squat, uh, when you press, when you do behind the neck presses. You see some guys doing behind the neck presses and they do partials. Lower the weight all the way down till it touches the back of your neck and press it back up. Um, it's just, it's the way it works and it's what I've found. That's how I've managed to put this much mass naturally um, on a six foot four frame. And my, uh, my height is six foot four on the dot. That's not a round up. It's six foot four on the dot. Again, watch the way Philip does his um, preacher bench machine curls here, and um, watch the way I do them. Um, I should step into the frame now, and um, you should see um, a full range of motion, um, which I do religiously. Um, I know you have to do it as a tall bodybuilder. Um, I know it as a fact. Um, see as full extension as you can um without snapping your elbows in half <laughs> and um you get some people who look at shorter guys sometimes and they say yeah he's not doing a full range of motion he's not doing the movement properly he's not actually curling or pressing the weight well that's nonsense um they don't need to do a full range of motion and in fact they benefit more often um 
from uh, partials that it stimulates the biceps more on a shorter arm to do partials. Um, and it's the same when you kind of do sit-ups. You can do a full sit-up um, and get less um, of a burn than when you do a partial sit-up. And that also has to do with your genetics, um, with the way your midsection is put together. And I feel it's the same way when you're tall and when you're short. And you see it also when you're doing benching. When I bench with Philip, um, he, he, he can get away with lowering the weight sometimes um, partially and pressing it up. Um, and I have to lower it all the way down to my chest and press it all the way back up. Um, and that's the only way I can grow. Um, if I do it any other way, I just don't get the results. And it's the same here, I, um, as you can see here with the preacher bench dumbbell curl. Um, not a preacher bench, I'm actually using just a, a standard bench and I've put it on an incline. And that's a very, it's a good tip actually for you guys out there. Um, I find it very good to just set up one of these um, benches and do dumbbell curls off them. And I, I find it fantastic. In fact, it's one of my number one things that I do for biceps peak. And I'll repeat again, a biceps peak on a tall guy, six foot six and over, um, six foot four, sorry, uh, and six foot six and over is a very rare thing to see. And um, at the end of this video, um, there's a photo of the development that I've managed to put on my arm. And they used to say to me, um, you're never, ever going to be able to build a peak, um, to build any significant mass um, on arms that long. Um, and I, th I, th I, when I heard it, I, I thought they're right. You know, um, I'm kidding myself, but I live in defiance. I always live in defiance. Um, my definition of determination is a display of defiance in the face of all defeating factors. Everything you can throw at me, every you'll never be able to do this. You'll never be able to do that. You can never do it without steroids. And I will do it, um, or I will die trying. And you can throw all the nevers. They can throw all the nevers at me that they want. Um, I'm going to keep doing my thing and I'm going to do it harder and harder and harder and the more they push me the harder I'm going to push and uh, I welcome all their naysays because it just makes me stronger and much stronger and um, as I was uh, continuing on from what I was saying before um, I've built a biceps peak not only on a, an arm that long uh, and not only naturally but um, on an arm that didn't appear um, even after years of training to have any um, inclination towards a biceps peak um, and I trained it very carefully um, other exercises than you see here because these in fact are not per, per se all of them my exercises but Philip's exercises um, because when you train with a training partner um, you do their exercises um, but fortunately Philip's a reasonable guy and we kind of we say okay you call the next exercise I'll call the next one afterwards and that's what we do. So we mix each other's exercises up. And uh, that's a good way uh, to go about training with a training partner. And I can throw a quick training partner tip out here um, to tall guys who are then going to have a shorter training partner. And it's um, be careful. Whenever you ch have a training partner, um, n a new training partner, remember that you're at risk of injury, no matter if they train harder than you or not. Um, it's kind of the change in rhythm. Um, whenever you have a training partner, you are at risk of injury. So train carefully to begin with until you adapt to the rhythm of training with another training, uh, with a, with another, uh, a training partner, basically. Um, I'm used to training alone. So whenever I train with someone else, um, in the past anyway, I always got injuries, um, because the pace changes, the rhythm changes, the exercises often change, the weights change. You often push each other, um, to train harder. And me and Philip certainly do that. And, um, You've got to be cautious. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got any injuries um, training with Philip recently because um, I've had I've kept that in mind from the beginning, and um, I've made fantastic gains training with Philip, and it's reinforced my conviction that um, when you're a tall bodybuilder, you need um, a short training partner, one of those short powerhouses. So that's an important tip. Um, I've trained with guys uh, a similar height to me, usually slightly shorter, but like six foot two or something. And it's just set me back because I've been uh, trying to help them along, you know, and uh, having to uh, go lighter or um, train easier, basically. And, and I don't need that. I need to train harder. I need a training partner who pushes me to train harder um, because that's a difficult thing to do. Um, and there it is. There's the biceps peak that I've developed. Um, on an arm that long, on a frame this tall, and naturally. 
and I'm happy with it and I'm not going to be modest about it either. Um, I don't need some other little moron out on YouTube to tell me that I haven't got that much of an arm or some nonsense like that. Um, I'm happy with my development. And um, those are my tips for the tall man uh, out there. Um, you've got it the hardest. Um, you guys out there, my friends out there on YouTube, six foot six, you guys have got it the hardest. So I hope this helps and good luck with your training.